Uh, it it kind of takes away from the compliment if somebody says, "Wow, Johnny, you love your casting or love your content or whatever," and then you immediately follow it up by like putting down on someone else. It just makes it worthless. It makes it a worthless statement. I don't know. It's just not something I'll ever look fondly on. Wow, is look at that. Somebody's making fun of another content creator or caster in my space. That's so cool because it makes me look better. I'm never gonna think that. I'm only gonna think, well, that's a bit lame. <laughs> but anyway, we've got a one v one match for you guys. It's two of the best one v one players out of South America, out of Brazil. Two of the up-and-comers, not just in the one scene, but in the RLCS scene as uh, as a whole this season. Swift for NIP. And uh, wait, who, I've just blanked on who Wisty finished the season with. Was it... Uh, no, it wasn't... He didn't finish with uh, Crew, did he? But either way, these guys both had outstanding seasons. I think Swift in particular... Oh, he's just missing open net. I think he in particular had uh, one of the best rookie seasons in RLCS this past year. Taking down uh, Furia in one of the grand finals for South American RLCS is no small feat for um, a debut player, especially of you know this version of Furia. But yeah, these guys are phenomenal talents. They both made deep runs, Swift slightly deeper run in Salt Mine Three qualifiers, making it all the way to the promo relegation tournament. Wisty fell short of that stage, but did make it into the latter stages of the close qual um, a few times. But uh, although Swift's results on the USC server have been slightly better, well, at least in Salt Mine 3 quals, than Wisty's have, Wisty does have the 2 to 1 head to head record against Swift all time. Uh, they've never played against each other on my channel, but uh, they have played in a few. They've, they've played three matches. Wisty's won two, uh, two of them. Swift has won one. I think Jarby's hosted one of those, maybe Fear, and uh, I can't remember who else. But yeah, there's three matches. You can see it on, a, on RL Jewels, really cool site to track. How players are going against each other in 1v1. Um, I'm not sponsored by them, I just think it's really cool. So definitely check them out. But yeah, a pretty quiet start to the match here. Wisty and Swift not able to get a goal in the first couple of minutes. Swift's backed off, giving Wisty quite a lot of the pitch to work with here. Delays the challenge after rapidly approaching. And uh, looks like Wisty's, for the most part, just going to wait and see what Swift is doing. He didn't pull the trigger early when Swift was advancing quickly towards him. And when you see stuff like that, it pretty much tells you that the two players you're watching have got a lot of experience playing against each other. That could be the first goal of the game, though it should be. Swift takes his time. Big miss on the aerial flick by Wisty. And it turns out to be just a simple pass to his opponent. We've all been there, missing at the near post in 1v1, and then the opponent just walks the ball down the middle of the pitch into the open net. Um, but we're not all hitting shots like that into the post to set them up. Lahart 2, thanks to the 24-month tier 1, by the way. Welcome back to the channel. Where have I been in your life lately? Uh, well, it took a bit of a break after the end of the RLCS season. It was quite a, you know, burst of RLCS this season with uh, everything being kind of compressed into four months. Uh, between February and May um, and now here we are in July with lots to look forward to in the summer we've got the FIFA E um, Rock League event we've got the Esports World Cup we've got RLCS Worlds of course that's a phenomenal save by Wisty by the way and he does manage to pre-flip onto the boost steal oh he doesn't get the back corner one though good defense to the back corner boost by Swift who now does have another open net. He's completely fluffed it though. I could put that down to two open net misses for Swift, although they were both very different types of open net miss. Swift now with a very bold reverse challenge, in your face reverse challenge there. But Wisty, once again, not really making early moves on any of these advanced challenges by Swift. Swift is a, he's putting himself in, no, himself in no man's land for a lot of these challenges. And Wisty knows that, but he's still just letting it happen. He's not really making any early outplays or attempts for outplays in the midfield. It's good control by Wisty, but again, he just gets immediately challenged by Swift, who's created a bit of space for himself here. Bad landing, though. Oh, that's going to be an easy goal for Wisty. He makes it look a bit more difficult than it needed, needed to be. But, uh, yeah, that was a huge misplay by Swift. They're right there, not holding power slide on his landing. Just completely lost his momentum. And uh, skidded out of position. Oh, look at this. The turtle kickoff by Wisty. Love that. Isn't going to work out, but it's not all too bad either. He's able to track back. And demo his opponent. Sends a pinch shot on target. But with the respawning Swift, it's going to be an easy save. Probably the wrong shot selection there by Wisty. And now air double bump at the other end by Swift. A good save by Wisty. Oh, a good double save by Wisty. And now he's got an open net briefly. 
at the other end of the pitch. Doesn't waste any time slotting the ceiling shot from his own half. What an interesting back and forth all the way from the last kickoff to the goal. Turtle kickoff by Wistie is really interesting to see. I wonder if he's going to go back to that one in this series. If he does, there's a couple of tricks he can use uh, to try and make it more successful. Oh, he's been demoed here. Didn't get the, any touch on the ball either. So Swift has got a tie game. But no doubt that was a mistake by Wistie. He's looking like he's trying to floor pinch that maybe back across the goal, but he ended up flying in front of the ball with not enough boost to make an adjustment at the last second. As we uh, get into the final 35 seconds of the game, I want you guys to do something for me if you can. Uh, score that open net maybe. Would be a good idea. These guys have not been on point with their open nets today. They've been quite awkward open nets, but still open uh, nonetheless. Yeah, remind me at the end of this game to tell you guys uh, a cool trick that you can use with your own turtle kickoff. Um, I'll, I'll explain it in between this game and the next because it's, yeah, it's, it's one goal game, 15 seconds left. So remind me in chat after this is done to do that. Got a really cool trick that I can teach you guys. Anyway, 15 seconds left. Swift needs possession or else he's going to drop game one. Oh, fast kickoff to the side. Look at this from Wistie. He's not even going to try and shoot the open net actually from the tight angle. Instead playing for the um, possession to keep Swift boost starved. That could be a smart move because obviously he's missed at the near post already this game and been counter-attacked. And now with Swift with one boost, delays his flick and actually drops it into the ground. Not the play that he wanted there. Wistie takes game one. And uh, very interesting. Open net misses for both players. Um, some of them are quite technical. Some of them are awkward, no doubt about it. But still, you'd expect there to be more goals in the second game um, and moving forward into the series. Yeah, like I was saying, I wanted to explain to you guys what we can look forward to if Wistie brings out that turtle kickoff again. Now, the turtle kickoff, where you inverted half flip, land upside down, and then you you know flip your car around at the last second. Um, well, actually, it's not quite the last second. It's maybe at the... Do you see that small boost pad um, in a straight line right before the you reach the ball in the straight spawn? The last boost pad you cross over, that's about where you want to press your self-writing button to flip your car over. Because when you do that, when your car is upside down and you flip it back over with your jump button, it pops up in the air slightly, and if you time it properly, you hit the ball square in the middle, solid contact, and you can recover very well because your car is pointing at your own goal. Even if the ball does end up in your half like it did in this instance, this game, you can recover quickly, put pressure on the opponent, maybe even win the race to the boost, or get a demo like Wissy did here. However, the counter is pretty simple. If you do an exaggerated delayed kickoff against a player who's uh, trying to use a turtle kickoff against you, there really isn't a lot that they can do because they're putting themselves in a position where they're sliding on their back. Their momentum is taking them towards the ball no matter what you do, what, what they do. So if you just exaggerate a delayed kickoff, then you can just chip it over them after they pass the ball straight to you. And yeah, we didn't see it there from Wissy. I would have loved to see it because it would have been fascinating to see if he can pull it off twice in one game. But uh, funnily enough, the counter to that counter is just not flipping your car over again. So you think about it, if you just slide into the ball upside down, what happens is your car, you chip the ball um, on target onto your opponent's goal. It's not a powerful chip, but you do get um, a touch on target nonetheless. So if your opponent tries to delay their kickoff, you could chip it over them. Now that's a strategy I've never seen pulled off in pro play. I've never seen it in a show match, but um, it's actually quite hard to spot. It is quite hard to spot. I've managed to do it in a ranked game before. Um, and obviously I'm not playing against pro players, but something for the future maybe something to look out for um, in your own games. Give it a go. Pull off a turtle kickoff against your opponent, maybe one or two, however many you think you need to actually get them to try and counter you with a delay. And then just do the same thing again, but don't flip your car over. Ship the ball. Anyway, let's get back into this match. We're 1-0 for Swift now. Very, very composed and very calm play by both these players. Not really taking... Um, too many risks without recoveries in the back end of them. Swift has given Wistie the entire pitch to play with. Wistie with a gentle maneuver to that open side of the pitch, but didn't make a move. 
before Swift closed the gap. I really think this is something Wisty needs to do in this matchup. He just has to make an early move, whether it's an early flick or a hard clear, something to stop Swift from just advancing into no man's land without fear of being outplayed, um, which is exactly what Swift has done here. He's quickly outplayed Wisty as Wisty advanced into no man's land. No time wasted there, just a quick pop down the middle. And um, a follow-up touch to score. Neon Burrito, when you say Jazer does this a lot, do you mean the turtle kickoff he does a lot? You really have to have a hard read. If you're going to try the counter to the counter of the turtle kickoff I was talking about, you really have to hard read that your opponent's going to delay the kickoff, <laughs> or otherwise you just get mega dunked on. Whoa, Wisty, <laughs> that's the wrong goal, buddy. He must have felt like he had no other option in this position after Swift ended up on the scoring end of the play here. Got bumped, wrong side of the ball, and <laughs> Wisty just wave dashed to own goal. He, he probably could have got done something there to get around the ball, but it was going to be tricky. The ball was on target. Wissy would have lost momentum if he flipped away from the ball. A pretty easy game so far for Swift. He's not had too many difficult decisions to make. VN3X1, thanks for gifting a sub to Nasigrul. Nasigrul. Welcome to the channel. The Swift have a team. Yeah, he, uh, he plays for Ninja of the Diamond. So what a save by Swift. Wisty's tried to trip him up and bump him on the exit, but Swift shrugs it off like it didn't even happen. Now looking to get the play going. Huge fake by Swift. And he's going to take his time with the finish. Wisty's ran all the way around the pitch here, so Swift is not rushing this to open net. He is really, really taking that one away. Oh, it's Nasig RL. Oh, okay. Yeah, I didn't see the RL there at the end. My bad. I want to see more proactivity from Wissy on the ball, though. He's, I think he's kind of just waiting for Swift to outplay himself. And yeah, that's a bit better. Just no nonsense. Force the issue. I think that, you know, I've always said this. I think this is the way that you want to mostly play Rocket League if you want to be the best player you can be. Proactivity. Um, aggression. Forcing the issue, obviously balancing that out with some passive plays, some reactive plays, keep your opponents guessing, is a good idea. But you've got it, you know, for the most part, I think, steer towards aggression if you want to be the one deciding who wins the series, who wins the match, who wins the game. I think Swift has been the more aggressive player between the two. Um, at both ends of the pitch. Wissi we'll has plenty of boost to retake possession here. Swift is still going to stick on him, though. Beautiful wave dash in the landing. To keep up his momentum and take possession and boost away from Wissy. Takes it all the way back into his half. This is frustrating for Wissy. Swift has had the majority of the control already. Oh, what a play. Flies under the ball, pops it over the incoming Wissy. And we can see a forfeit pretty soon here. Wissy's really not had a lot going for him this game. <laughs> That's a phenomenal play by Swift. Wissy didn't think he was going to get back under the ball as quickly as he did. Adam Bomb, thanks for the 30 month prime. He says, can't wait to see the chalk cast boys in Fort Worth. Yeah, we're looking forward to it as well. We're definitely all going to be there. Rizzo obviously just lives down the road, and CJ and I uh, should be casting at that uh, event as well. Okay, here's a nice easy goal for Wissy. Not done just yet. I take it back. No forfeit in sight. But he does need to get some kickoff possessions for himself, or not, uh, or he's not going to have any real comeback potential. Push kickoff goes well. Now, will he shoot this first time? He will. It's going to be a save by Swift. A beautiful landing by Swift as well on the inside of the post. It looks like a miss on the boost pad. Small miss or small boost pad miss there from Wisty. Left him with less juice in the tank for the flick. And now Swift is putting on a defensive clinic. Some good saves. Wisty off the wall now. Flip secured. And what a slot to come back within three goals. Swift faked a jump, comes back down. Wisty did not bite on the initial fake challenge. Just uh, put it top bins before Swift could recover. Oh, look at that read on the delayed kickoff by Wisty. He's within two now. Swift tries to delay the kickoff. Oh, Wisty spotted it a mile away. Rockley Chris, thanks for the 39 month year one. 
How <laughs> dare you don't talk about the G2 Major win of the Brazil vs Brazil show match? So biased, man. I know, it's really biased. Here, Wisty's really coming back. I should never have said this guy's maybe thinking about a forfeit. What was I talking about? He's back within one goal with 37 seconds left. And not just kickoff possessions, kickoff goals for Wisty. He's got another strong kickoff for himself here. And he shoots first time. This is the kind of early moves that's going to keep Swift guessing about his challenges. Defensive flip reset from Swift and a follow through. Puts the pressure back on Wisty. Swift doesn't pull the trigger from close range though. This is still a very good position for him to try and get the two goal lead back. Wisty, boost armed, strong defense. Can't defend his back corner boost though. And Swift takes it all the way down the line, taking every single boost, big and small, as he does so. Wisty forced to turn and challenge, no luck. Swift does hold on to that one goal lead. It looked like it was going to be a much more routine win for him after the impressive start that he had right before that lead started to crumble. All right, game three. Sorry, just had to reply to a message in between these two games, trying to sort out shotcast bonus recordings. As uh, Rizzo's completely beamed his sleep schedule recently with, uh, I think, League of Legends. <laughs> and now... Uh, yeah, now we're just never all awake at the same time. We'll figure it out, though. We'll figure it out, all you Chalkcast enjoyers. Nice hard clear there by Wisty to take a one-goal lead, continuing the momentum he had at the end of game two. Really disappointed we've not gone back to that turtle kickoff after we talked about it for like a minute or two. I swear, if if I never see this... Oh, good shot by Wisty. What a slot. Look at the timing of the shot here, that the ball passes Swift as he's mid-flip, so he can't do anything about it. Swift flips right there. Wisty probably knew that that's going to happen, so he actually just shot the ball past him. And Swift had already committed forward, couldn't side-flip to intercept the ball as it passed right by him. These guys are really reading each other's kickoff so well. Any delayed kickoff is getting hard countered. I mean, well played. It's not like Wisty's delaying it full on. That's not a, you know, mega delayed kickoff. It's just a slight delay. But any deviation from full speed seems to be spotted by these guys early enough to just shoot the ball in. Wisty being pushed back into defense. Both these guys have got wave dashes for days to keep the momentum up. Oh, Wisty's way out of the play here, though. Nice play by Swift. Simply chipping the ball over him, avoiding the dunk. Notice there that he didn't just chip the ball high. He also chipped it to the right because Wisty was coming slightly from the left of him. Um, and Swift understands that, well, if I could just get the ball past my opponent here, it doesn't really matter how long it takes me to score it because Wisty is going to be so far out of the game. There's nothing he's going to be able to do. Good double save by Swift. Wisty has to back off all the way. Despite the back corner boost missed by Swift, it won't matter much as he tries a pre-flip flick to the top corner. Wisty saves that as well. Long shot. Test Swift recovery. He passes the test and looks... Oh, what double save again. <laughs> That's unbelievable. He's had some spectacular double saves in this series. And that one's the best of the lot. And he scores on the counter attack as well. Drops a great pass. Wisty. Oh my goodness, what a sequence by Swift. Wisty kind of botched that recovery, but how about that by for defense by Swift? Minute and 30 into the game. South America 1v1 has become all about defense. This is a region that burst onto the scene with World-class offensive play, but really not a lot to brag about when it came to defensive capabilities. Uh, how things have changed over the years. I think it was with Furia's departure from the region that the rest of the teams really started to improve their, their defense. Uh, that was the season when Furia and Complexity were both no longer there. Sam kind of learned how to defend. And uh, it's made them much more versatile and deep 
as a, as a talent pool, I would say. Inverted half flip by Swift off. That's unbelievable control as he just perfectly catches the ball. Wisty's going to hit him with a reverse challenge. Swift jumps blindly over a bump again, just perfectly wobbling on the landing, set up that wave dash. This is phenomenal stuff by Wisty and Swift. Has Wisty overstepped his mark though? Yes, he has. Swift is away with this one again. 4 2. We've seen a real turn in the tide here. If Wisty had momentum at the end of the last game, the start of this one, that's very much swung back in Swift's favour. It's unbelievable movement by Swift. Such unique movement as well. You rarely see an inverted half flip in midfield play in Rocket League, but to see one in the face of danger, I mean, it wasn't just a slight or, a, you know, a small repositioning with no pressure on him. He was dispossessing Wisty with that inverted half flip. Pre flip bump by Swift. Wisty recovers well. Gets bumped once again. That boost is not spawning for a while, so Swift is going to need to bail on the back corner here. And he's not passed over too many small pads. Still turns early, dives in. Wisty absorbs the challenge and does slot the open net. Swift looking to get back to that two goal lead. Lots of space after the kickoff win. Early reset used. He saw Wissy lunging in. Didn't have to move the ball much to avoid the challenge. Swift actually air dribbled quite low here, forcing Wisty to commit really heavily with downward momentum to that challenge. And I really love that decision by Swift not to air dribble too high. So if you air dribble really high off the sidewall, then you run into ceiling challenges a lot more easily. The opponent can kind of just come at you with neutral momentum, at least in the vertical uh, component. It's kind of floating forwards. But by air dribbling low, you kind of force your opponent, if they are going to ceiling challenge you, to jump off the ceiling, come down at you quite fast. That makes the timing of the challenge a whole lot more difficult. Swift is really outplayed Wisty at both ends of the pitch there. Delayed kickoff by Swift. For once, these guys not able to spot the other hitting a delayed kickoff. Swift barely escapes. Wisty's demo there. Perfect reset. And another mind game by Swift. As Wisty completely falls for it. It looked like Swift is going to hit this one high. Swift instead just slows down the shot after the flip reset. Slots it underneath him. Not actually sure how much of this uh, quick chat that we're seeing is trash talk, how much of it is friendly banter between the two. I, l I think it's probably the, uh, the latter, but if anyone's aware of any uh, drama between these two that I'm unaware of, please do share. Whisky, we'll try not to reverse dribble into his own net. They're friends, yeah, I think that's the case. I'm pretty sure that they're just... Uh, they're just messing around with each other. Swift to the double reset in defense. A lovely pass to Wisty. Who's <laughs> not, hey, not lost yet. This is um, definitely a pretty risky play for Swift to, to be making because three goals in 40 seconds. We've already seen a late comeback by Wisty with some success in the previous game. Swift not falling for the leave your net open and grab the side, uh, the mid boost there. He should be coming back here. Lovely pre-flip. Dish in an eighth goal. Uh, Wissy was looking for a counter-attack in this position. Wanted to go straight down the middle of the pitch with the ball. Swift is not going to afford him that luxury. Yeah, too little, too late. Swift is back in defense. You're going to have a pretty hard time scoring against him t uh, today, it would seem. This would tie their all-time 1v1 record in matches. I should have probably mentioned at the start of this show match that the most recent time the two did play in a show match, it was Wisty who emerged victorious 3-0. So Swift has really stepped it up against his uh, rival. 
with this performance today. Just one game away from the series win. What's the car Swift is using? You've never seen it? Good one. I don't believe you. I don't believe you. Me typing faster than anyone? I don't think I am really. But I bet a bunch of you could type faster than me. Type right, right now in, in chat. What, what's your words per minute in typing? Mine is like 80, I think. 80-ish. When I used to do type racer a little bit, um, instead of studying for exams, I could get about 80. Uh, but yeah, obviously if, it's wor if you're typing words that you know, like if you're just typing what you think in your head, you're, you're going to be faster. Um, compared to type racer where you're typing a lot of random stories and things you just words you don't really know and don't really use but yeah when, you, when on type racer my typing is 80 words per minute ish and if i i did manage to certify 100 once or twice i, I could definitely certify 100 if we get a nice easy one look at you 120s in chat is that like type racer 120 or just like the rubbish you think in your own brain 120 One one early on in this uh, fourth game here. Both players out playing the other at either end of the pitch. Rare KS, thanks for the five month prime. Welcome back to the channel. Oh, Wistie clipped him. It looked like this was going to be a save for Swift. Using the back wall as a launch pad for the irritable bump denial. But Wisty just clipped him before the ball uh, made contact with Swift's car. And it is something you, you always run the risk of if you're going to use the back wall as a launch pad for irritable bump saves while shadowing. Um, it's quite difficult to, to dodge someone who does, does get in front of the ball. You pretty much have to use the wall as a launch pad to flip into them. Yeah, I think Wistie's just faked himself there. That was another, technically another uh, fake by Swift, but Wistie could have just hit the ball there and blocked anything that Swift was doing, so I'm not sure why he's flipped the other way. <laughs> Almost definitely a mistake. How do you get into commentating when you have no real experience? Uh, just go live in your stream and cast replays. Probably the best way to do it. Is, uh, with ballchasing.com right now, you can get replays from any pro in the world. Just search for their account and uh, cast some ranked games. Listen back to it, get some friends to review you, give you some feedback. That's, uh, that's probably how I would suggest getting into it because um, you're not going to be able to just throw invites to pros before you've built up a body of work. Let's see if Wistie can keep the series alive. Swift is just inching ahead of him. 4-3. Good fight for the mid boost there by Swift. He committed well to it. Yeah, I mean, for all new commentators, my, my advice is the same. Just do it as a hobby. Don't really think about making it a career because... There really are not that many jobs in Rocket League commentary and in esports commentary anyway. It's not a career that has a lot of easy transitions um, into other things. So basically, I wouldn't recommend it as a career choice. <laughs> it's not something I have ever looked to do, like commentary, I mean. It's never something I've looked to do um, full time, I guess. It's one of the things I do. But. Uh, yeah, I, I, I even say this to people who are full-time roughly commentators. You know, you got you got to find other things to do as well. It's not, I don't know. Right now, esports commentary is not really a feasible career choice, long term. Except for very, very few people. Very few people. It's better to try and diversify either, you know, between multiple games or even better by diversifying as a content creator, commentator. Um, and other things that you can do. Whether it's consulting, or honestly just like get a real job. <laughs> it's much smarter to just have a real job. But a real job, of course, uh, you know, I mean, something with actual qualifications. 
Um, <laughs> Alright, uh, uh, same thing with, you know, pro play. It's probably better to stick in skill and have a backup play. Right, we're seen down by one. Needs a win here with Swift's level of goalkeeping we've seen today. That shot was pretty ambitious. Pretty hopeful by Wistie. Swift fakes a ceiling rebound there. Managed to keep enough momentum to easily retreat and retrieve the ball. A nice ceiling pinch by Swift. He's invested a ton of boost trying to chase it down. Wistie plays it to the side, seeing Swift coming. And that looks like it might have been a good investment to boost by Swift flying back towards the ball. He made Wistie think that he might be able to get a dunk on it, even though it didn't look possible. Small pad pathing on point from Swift. In and out save looks good. Oh, brilliant choice by Swift again he's missed the near post rebound but stolen the boost away from his opponent tries to pre-flip to get a surprising shot to target he did actually hit the target there wrapped himself around the ball to put the ball almost back the way it was going had Wistie turned off ball cam for a second there just to look ahead of him to see if he could win the race to the boost that would have been a goal Swift really producing some tough to read plays he's been Extremely difficult to predict with recoveries. Defensive touches, now offensive touches as well. Wistie we'll stays safe in the back corner there. Wins the race to the big boost pad. That should allow him to break free of defense. Oh, Swift is overextended though. Wistie, even better than that, he's going to be scoring. Swift tried to stick around and surprise Wistie with his presence. Wistie was in position to play the ball early. Run it into the open net. Final minute. Wissi defends his back corner boost again. Slaps it from distance. And that is exactly what we were asking Wissi to do earlier on. And do you guys remember way back in game one, game two, I'm saying where are the long shots from Wissi to punish Swift's um, constant movement into no man's land? Well, there it is there. Simple turn from Swift to look into advance into no man's land. Wissi puts it over him. And the, the shot wasn't even as high as it needed to be, or as high as it could have been, I should say. But it was still easily high enough to go over Swift in no man's land. Swift looking to tie the game now. Oh, it's a simple pop that does the trick. And he's going to spam what a save. What did Swift say, by the way, all you Portuguese speakers in uh, chat there? What did he say before that? Oh, he said, no way, lol. Okay. He's probably saying no way um, as if to say, well, why would anybody shoot that? But I mean... I reckon it was a good shot. I think it was a very smart shot against the player who keeps advancing um, pretty much every single time they have the chance to do so. Something you should all be paying attention to. If your opponent keeps crossing no man's land every single time that you've got the ball on top of your car, every single time that you're about to threaten a shot, you've got to shoot it at some point. You've got to shoot it. Just keep them honest. Swift to the demo. Looking to take the game. In the closing seconds here, letting it bounce towards Wistie. Times his challenge well, but the ball's gone past him. Oh, recovery from Swift is easy after that mid-air collision. And Wistie's down by one with five seconds to go. Wistie was matching Swift's momentum here, but he flew forward instead of continuing upwards. Got a misread of what Swift was planning. And now all Swift needs is an even kickoff position. He's going to reverse into net, actually. Well, this is fascinating. You want a choice of play this is by Swift. It's not going to work. What is he doing? Did he say I'm going to give you a chance? Is that what he said in chat? What did Swift say there? Because I saw him say chance. He just reversed into his net and then stationed himself on the inside of the post. And I think he's let him go to overtime there pretty much because that was not uh, the safest play with five seconds to go. Oh, uh, Wistie said let's go overtime. Are you coward? <laughs> Well, it's clearly Swift is not a coward. It's into overtime he goes. He's going to win it immediately in that OT. Yes, he is. <laughs> Swift with the easy. He goes to overtime just to then win overtime in five seconds. He had five seconds to play in regulation before giving Wistie the overtime. Swift too strong today. Three straight games to take down his rival. That ties up their all-time series score record against each other. Uh, they're now 2-2 two and two in show matches, I believe, on four different channels. Fear, uh, Jarby, myself, and I can't remember. I've totally forgotten who the, who the other one was, uh, so my bad on that. But it's on. I know it's on RL Jewels. I checked before the match started to, uh, today.
But um, yeah, we'll need to get a, a rubber match at some point. These two are great, great fun to watch. They clearly know each other very well, which is what makes this fun to watch, I think, or especially fun to watch. The fact that they're so familiar with each other's play styles um, leads to a lot, a lot of mind games being attempted. Yeah, some world, world class uh, goalkeeping by Swift today. Really, for me, that was the highlight. Uh, the, the double saves. That one in particular, I think it was in game three, was unbelievable. Yeah, Swift, very, very interesting. I love watching his movement, especially. Like, just the way he moves around the pitch is very creative. 